Hey, I had such a good time yesterday doing my video in front of the whiteboard that I decided I'm going to do another one today. Uh, this one's not going to be about evolution, however. This is going to be about bivalve anatomy. Um, bivalves as in clams, scallops, mussels, uh, which is a group of mollusks. Um, you might be aware that formerly, um, when I was a professor, I taught invertebrate zoology. It was one of the courses that I taught. And, um, at, well, you can probably guess it was an actually really intense course. The, the students, uh, I went through, I made it a point that the students got a graduate level introduction. I mean, it was it, very, very intense. It wasn't, uh, it, it was by no means a slide course. It was a 400 level course in the first place. But we went through stu detail by detail, taxonomy, anatomy, dissections, uh, full-time four-hour labs. Anyway, it was, it was a great course. I, I loved teaching it. And anyway, one of the things we covered was, was mollusks specifically. That's one of the groups that I, that I professionally worked with. And we, we studied these intently, including clams. So I thought it would be fun to go through and do a video on bivalve anatomy. Um, again, I apologize, uh, just like yesterday, for my crude drawings. I am not an artist. I am an invertebrate zoologist. So again, you know, I do, I, I'm trying to illustrate the point. So anyway, so one of the first things that anyone will that you notice about bivalves, uh, the first thing that jumps into everybody's mind are the fact that they have these two external shells. So all of the interior parts are covered by this external shell, uh, kept hidden inside of this. Now this is all this this the, the technical term for this is called a conch, like just like people know the, the conch shell. Well, conch is actually the term for the shell. Um, now in bivalves they have two. This is very different than all other mollusks. Uh, snails, uh, a lot of other groups of mollusks have a single shell. Uh, chitons uh, have a uh, eight shells. Uh, Aplacophorans lack a shell. Uh, cephalopods, with the exception of the chambered nautilus, also lack an external shell. Uh, but bivalves have, this two, have these two shells. Now this shell, uh, is, it serves, the, the per main purpose of it is, again, to protect all of the interior parts of, of the bivalve. And it can be actually really, it, it can actually be a very complex structure uh, with lots of different external sculpturing. I have some examples. Uh, here is a uh, Venus clam, now which is fairly smooth on the outside. Um, but then that, that contrasts with here, this is a tridacna, one of the giant clams. Uh, this is a small giant clam. But it has this fluting on the outside that actually encourages epiphytes to grow on the outside of it, sponges, corals, and things to grow on the outside of the shell, uh, which offers protection by camouflage. Uh, here is a cockle. Now, if you look at a cockle shell, they have these ridges on the outside of the shell. Uh, these ridges make it harder for uh, sea stars, also called starfish, to cling to the outside of the shell. Um, start, now, if you probably are aware, sea stars, they, they use their tube feet to hold on to the outside of the shell, and then they pry the shell open. Having these ridges makes it a lot more difficult to, to open up. Also, having the ridges like this, if you look at the front of it, um, sea stars will use, they'll, they'll actually will rotate and use this torquing action to try to twist the shell to try to break the ligament. Um, having it, these locking teeth make it a lot more difficult for the for a sea star to get into. Uh, one of the really interesting bivalve shells uh, that most people are familiar with uh, is this here. These here, um, this is a scallop, I'm sorry, I should have pointed that out. Now scallops have these structures here on the outside called wings. Uh, now these wings are really, they're, they're kind of an amazing um, adaptation. And now what these wings do is these wings provide protection, okay? They actually help keep the scallop secure. And the way that they do that is because they have this inside the wing, they have this lo a lot of surface area uh, for this ligamentous structures to hold the thing together. Now, having this tight ligament, this prevents things like it prevents leakage, um, and again, it, it offers it makes the comfort and security for the scallop shell. Before we leave the shell, I think it's important to note that the shell itself is actually very complex in structure. Um, it's made of a mineral called aragonite. And it exi it's in several different layers. This layering uh, and different directions of the crystal structure is what gives some some like pearl oysters their uh, their iridescent interior. Uh, if you've if you've ever seen that. Uh, but one one of the things about the now the outside of a bivalve shell, the the, the outer layer, you kind of see in this in this clam shell here, uh, can also be 
complex, and it's actually proteinaceous. Rather than being composed of aragonite, it's composed of proteins. Uh, here, uh, I just just to show sort of the outside, the, this fuzziness. So now they can have actually long hairs on them. Now these hairs, what these hairs do, just like the ridges on a scallop shell, is one of the benefits is they make it very difficult for uh, things like a sea star to gain purchase on the outside of the shell. The hairs will rip off before. Uh, the sea star can open the shell. Now, now looking at the interior anatomy. Now, I'll picture this this um, bivalve like we're looking at a bivalve, and it is open, okay, like this. So we're looking at the inside of the bivalve uh, from the front. So one of the first things, uh, the most part, what defines mollusks, in fact, is this here, this structure on the out that lines the shell. It's called the mantle. Now the mantle is what secretes the actual shell itself. The, so the free edge of the mantle uh, is constantly depositing this aragonite as the shell grows. Also, if the shell is damaged, the mantle will repair the shell where it's broken. Um, now, right inside the mantle, uh, we have the foot. Now the foot of a mollusk, uh, of a um, bivalve, particularly like in burrowing clams, the foot is used for digging. Um, but it can also be used to move across the front surface. A lot of the cockles can actually move rapidly uh, across the surface of the sediment um, by using this foot as a like a pole vaulter would. And uh, it it the, but this also serves a lot of other functions. Now, um, and I'll talk about I'll end this with the uh, one of the important functions of the foot. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what what to discuss next. Okay. Oh, if you look here, it's kind of hard to see in the drawing. I apologize. Uh, this is a this is what's called a feeding groove. Uh, this runs from from the outside where water comes in, and it brings food and particles. Now these are suspension feeders, so it means that they're bringing food particles into their into their body through their siphons, uh, and they run down the ciliary groove. Some of the water will go over the gills, and then but this will go into the mouth, which is just a small hole. Uh, very, it's it's very difficult to see, but it's 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 obviously important. Um, now. So the food will go in there. Now, I had discussed this earlier. Now, the gills will be in here. Now, this would be inside. This is called a branchial chamber. So this this water will come in, go over the gills, and then into through the ciliary groove into the mouth. Now, the siphon, now I've, I drew it small here, but r r understand that the siphon can actually change size. The siphon can be very, very, it could retract into a tiny, where it's completely hidden by these folds. Uh, called the hood, or it can actually extend out and be be quite large. Uh, now, if you've probably if you've ever walked on a beach, uh, cl a clamming beach, um, you know that this siphon is extremely sensitive. Okay, it's very very sensitive to vibrations. Um, if just your foot walking across the sand, you'll see that clams will squirt. Now, this, the vibrations will cause the squirting action, okay, to occur as the siphon retracts back into the hood inside the mantle. Okay. So as it retracts, it gets rid of all of the liquid that it has stored inside of it. Finally, um, and I don't have it illustrated here, but if any of you have ever collected mussels from the beach, uh, you'll notice that if you, when you take a mussel off the substrate, you'll see that there's a string that comes out of, so you'll sometimes see the string coming out of the branchial chamber. Now that's really important, that string is called a byssus. And that's secreted by the foot. That's another function of the foot. In fact, in mussels, the foot's used solely for secreting these this bissel threads or string uh, that it used to attach. So this is pretty, this is kind of important. And just just before um, I don't say much more about that. Um, not all mollusks, not all bivalves have these 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 threads. Uh, it's mussels. A lot of the various groups will have it. But it's important to note that uh, if you are collecting mussels, you really 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 need to check. Uh, most places they, they do testing because mussels uh, are, are a prime carrier of this paralytic shellfish poisoning, um, sometimes called the red tide. Okay, so just remember that. So when you see that string, just remember, look up, check. Your, usually your local fishing game uh, will be testing for to see if there's red tide or paralytic shellfish poisoning in your region. So uh, don't, don't, I can't urge you. I can't tell you enough. P be careful about that. Now, if you probably hadn't guessed, I was having a little bit of fun, a little bit of inappropriate fun there. Uh, but there was a method to my madness. There was a reason behind it. Um, and it's a little bit of interesting history. Uh, Carlos Linnaeus, the father of modern taxonomy, uh, the guy who developed the binomial classification system, also named a lot of the morphological characteristics we use uh, for identifying uh, plants, animals, lots of different things, meaning the actual what we call the structures today 
are often names that, that Linnaeus gave to those, those particular structures. And he did that with the bivalve mollusks. But for some reason, uh, he named all of the parts of a clam after female external genitalia. Um, literally, the clitoris, the, the labia minor, the labia major, all of those parts were different parts of the clam shell were named after, after that. Uh, immediately afterwards, I mean, he was, he was loudly condemned in his own time for it being highly inappropriate that, that he do this. And a, uh, de, uh, was it Mendez de Costa, another, another well-known uh, biologist at the time, renamed all of the parts to what we call them today. Uh, getting rid of Linnaeus's vulgar terms. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed it.